You're listening to Alternative Future Radio, home of the weird, resting place of the paranormal. We'll take you to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Strange phenomena, aliens, psychics, cryptozoology, conspiracy, holistic health, and UFOs. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. Good morning. Welcome to the Out There Hour. The Out There Hour on Alternative Future Radio. The Out There Hour with Basil and Mark. www.alternativefutureradio.com Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. The Middle East. Africa. Everybody in between. Europe. There's not much in between the Middle East and Africa, is there really? Brighton, yes. Not only have we got one amazing uh, guest today. It's we, buy one, get one free today. We've, we've got two, Bog off. two titans of truth. Titans of truth. Um, from the United Kingdom. You heard that pun, not pun, buzzword, buzzword. here first. You heard it here first. Yeah. Um, yeah, not just one guest today, two incredible guests. Yeah. Uh, uh, Years and years and years of experience in the... Oh, uh, between them, certainly, yeah. Contactee, abductee, experience of field in the United Kingdom. If you're somebody who's not even that interested in the abductee, contactee uh, field, still listen, because today's guests have got insights into all sorts of much more earthly and grounded uh, goings-on and maybe a possible uh, non-terrestrial connection. And something different and something yeah. interesting on crop circles. Yeah. And what they may actually mean and yeah. how they may actually be. Yeah. Ah. All sorts of funny business. Uh, I liked it, actually. Yeah, very, very good. Amash. Amash, yeah. What's the website? Amash.co.uk, I believe. Um, A-M-M-A-C-H. Amash was created to help address the vacuum in the United Kingdom that exists in respect of being an official body mm. where people experiencing alien abduction uh, or being contacted by other beings or anomalous mind management mm. could turn to for support and understanding. Because it is primarily a, hi- a helpline. Th- th- there is a phone number and an email address and they help people who've had abduction experiences and such like. And it's somewhere for you to turn to. Yeah. Uh, we don't... Uh, it's a hard thing yeah. to talk about. I mean, about. They, they do interviews. He's got there's a there's a YouTube channel, uh, Megawatts uh, One or Six, I think, um, and they've got the website and they've got information and they do sort of conferences and they talk about exopolitics and all that stuff. But they also do uh, an actual bona fide helpline. Yeah, there is. And, and a lot of the people who phone it, I assume, don't go on to you know great media careers and tell everybody about the story. They're, they're it's just private. Oh no, they don't want to. No. They don't want the publicity. Only um, a small few ninety nine public percent of the time. We've had to literally drag people onto this show. Certainly, to some talk of them about things yeah. like that. And they'll have all their details at the end of the inter- of the interview. Yeah, if you'd like to contact them, and uh, why don't we have a an advert? Yeah. Okay. Why not? Are you ready for an adventure? Prepare yourself. For more alternative future radio than any human being should have access to. How do you get this? It's simple. With the new alternative future radio Android application, you can download all the latest shows and the archived shows as well. Help support alternative future radio for just a dollar and ninety nine cents. PayPal will bill you in your very own currency if you don't use dollars. Find out more at alternativefutureradio.com. Okay, now we're going live over to somewhere in West London to talk to Miles Johnson and also Joanna Summerscales, I believe. Hello, uh, yeah. Miles and Joanne. Hello. Hello. Oh. I'm in West London, and Joanne is linking via Skype from up north in Nottingham, the English Midlands. Ah. The East Midlands, Nottinghamshire, actually. I'm not too far from from Eastwood, which is the birthplace of D.H. Lawrence. Oh, right. Well, that's how you like to sell it, is it? Oh, I <laughs> so oh, boy, I do. One. <laughs> well, how well, not? I just have the better hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, no comment on that, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a funny hour. Um, well, now, we're, we're doubly <laughs> blessed to have Miles Johnson and Joanne Summerscales today. I mean, how exciting. Yes. Uh, Miles, between you and uh, Joanne, you've, you've really triggered quite a lot of our previous guests. We watched some of your videos and thought, we want some of that. Well, it was very interesting because we've had a bit of a busy morning. I had John Lear, Skyping with John Lear this morning, and that's in response to the most recent thing we put up on YouTube, which is uh, it's so important we've sort of come together with ExoPolitics UK and my sort of basis team and the Amash project because um, uh, David Griffith gave a very important presentation about the Falklands War and the alien um, involvement with the Argentinians in an island of, of Antarctica called Thule Island, that's T-H-U-L-E. Mm. And uh, this is very important because the, a lot of the connections, if you look at the Amash material, um, basically uh, there's an, all, an awful lot of pointers towards the military involvement with uh, non-humans. And I, I would prefer to qualify these so-called aliens or ETs or whatever you want to call them, just call them non-humans. Yeah, because we don't have definite proof they're extraterrestrial, and we don't have definite proof they're extra-dimensional. We just don't know who they are. They're not us. Yeah, Miles, we started off calling them aliens when we first started, and we very quickly dropped that and went for non-humans because nobody really seems to have a, a definitive yeah, answer. Uh, the reason for that is that the the disinfo, the COINTELPRO disinfo, is always distracting people away from where the focus is. So when you call people aliens, a or extraterrestrials you're immediately assuming we've got a three-dimensional universe, which is wrong, and yeah. you're immediately assuming that they must be in a distant planet far, far away. And yeah. then, of course, the astronomers will immediately debunk everything and say, oh, well, it takes so many thousand million years for the speed of light to go here and there, and therefore you're talking bunk because they could, no way could a spaceship ever come here or we send them. But that's only up. because they're still working with the physics paradigm <coughs> and accepting that... Um, you know, the speed of light is it, and that's clearly not the case. So this, uh, this, this connects immediately with the falsehood of Einsteinian physics, the way Nikola Tesla's work was completely trashed in the early part of the century, and therefore, for instance, Nikola Tesla was doing communication and his assistants were communicating, at, uh, or as it's claimed, with other beings, and he was transmitting at 30 to 40 times the speed of light. Yeah, and uh, also assumes that the that the spe uh, Ava, which uh, 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 Joanne interviewed in the Amash, Pro Amash Reports project from Prague on uh, uh, episode four, um, a Ava Zemanova, which is a thing Barry King brought in from Prague, she brings in the seeding of humanity a long time ago, but her her basic postulation is that there are many different time space fields in the universe and it's a bit like the weather system it's a bit like assuming that the but weather that all makes sense doesn't it yeah yeah it's, 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 it's a bit quite like, logical it's, yeah it's all very very logical so it's a bit like saying that the weather must be exactly the same all of the entire planet earth with no variations hmm. and the astronomers are saying well you know the universe has got exactly the same characteristics over the entire universe we know what the whole thing does and but we don't know 95% of it, but we know what everything does. It's, it's ridiculous. Mm, mm. So if you have multiple different time-space fields, then aliens or non-humans could very well exist as matter from a different time-space well, field. When we, we when, could be invisible or whatever. You know. When we speak to abductees or contactees or whatever you want to call them, or experiences... That's another name. Mm. Another yeah, the name. names have confused us to hell. Um, they're talking about other dimensional or mm -hmm. interdimensional beings. Yeah. Uh, they're not talking about spaceships as such. They may not have gone anywhere. They may have just moved sideways. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That that's really what seems to be become be becoming the consensus of uh, from you know all the interviews we've done so far. Um, and I, I really think that that really is is you know again we have to look at that. It's just you know a millimeter in front of our nose, perhaps or less than that, um, at another frequency. Yeah. But it is very real, nonetheless, and tangible. And, you know, and if you also just look at the work of another of uh, a great researcher, is that of Lloyd Pye, who has been working with the Star Child. I don't know whether you folks have interviewed him. No, but, I've, um, uh, I sent him a message. I'm still awaiting a reply. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, well, Lloyd, Lloyd is over in the UK shortly, guys. So you really need to get a hold of him, uh-huh. and I can help you do that. But anyway, um, but Lloyd's work is 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 really going to be a benchmark uh, watershed for 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 the evidence. Because yeah, this is important he, because it's nuts and bolts stuff. It's not anything in your imagination. No, it, it absolutely is, and uh, and he he is a pion- real pioneer, and he, like all of us, are doing all of this research and hard work and hours and hours of time yeah, and effort in, in on essence, fresh air. In, in essence, what happened is that um, a nurse or a, a young lady uh, in Mexico uh, found two totally intact skeletons in a, a totally dry environment in a cave in Mexico. She collected all the bones and was bringing them back. Uh, the crucial thing, one of these, the skulls and the, the, the skeleton of one of these was completely different. Mm. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a male and a female who were embraced and buried, but the, but the strange looking one was covered in earth. Uh, and cutting a very long story short, it means that Lloyd Pye has got a human and a non-human looking skull, mm-hmm. physically, physical bone skull. It is a non-human. Yeah. I can tell you definitively yeah. it is now. I'll go on record yeah. as saying and it. Now, it's, it's been mistakenly, as Lloyd has said, um, the, called a star child. Mm-hmm. So, but o- over the last 10 or 15 years, he's been doing an awful lot of experiments on this, and it's taken a, a whole, his whole life since then. And the analysis is revealing that it's got um, non-human DNA in it, but it's very important that the way this has been done, it's been done... In the geneticist it's, it's, as in well. In other words, research. they've done a zygote. They've essentially done an, an, an implantation, an artificially implanted. You know, when you're having, uh, if you can't have children, in order for your genetic material to be carried into the child, what they do is they take the egg of a, of a normal, valid, uh, healthy woman, take her internal DNA out of the egg, put the DNA, now I've got to be careful, I'm probably using the wrong term, but you take the, your genetic material of the mm. father in, or, or the into the um, egg um, of the woman so that there is the actual DNA of, uh, or the chromosomes from the, the father. Yeah. Right? Uh, that then is put into the, um, into the woman and then she has a viable fertilized egg. But it uses basically the, the encased outer shell of the valid, viable human and what's happened is with the star child, in order for the star child, which is alien, to be born physically in this world, in our physical genetic body, it had to be implanted using artificial technology to implant this, this zygote into the... Um, now I might be using the wrong terms there. It's we're with you, though. We, 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 know, we know the principle. But in other words, you take a human egg, stick alien DNA in the middle of it, shove that into a woman, bingo, you've got a star child. Does Miles, that make sense? Yeah, it does. It, Miles, to, to, to be fair, though, we have to um, uh, ask, I mean, how do we know this is... Uh, extraterrestrial. What's the evidence for and against? Because I've looked into that a little well, bit before, and, well, can, and there's a few debunking sites. It has to be said. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you a little bit more because I, I've been keeping track of things a little bit more. Um, initially, it, about three or four years ago, um, Lloyd didn't have enough funds to do a whole raft of genetic testing. Now he has got a, a geneticist on board who has done a whole more lot of testing, which initially, about three or four years ago, they thought there was human mum, alien dad. Let's just use those terms for, for uh, you know. Yeah. I think yeah. it's also important, Joanne, that the actual science mm. to do those tests is really very, very recent. Yes, and but also, what I want to say uh, they, now... They've also, they've also got young kids who are willing to do it as opposed to senior geneticists who don't want to lose sure, their funding. Sure, but let me tell you now that the latest information, updated information, is that it is neither human dad or human mum. That is now out of the picture completely. The misnomer of the star child name is that because it was so small, they thought originally that it must be a child because it was so small. So they christened it the star child, and that's just become its name. It was, in fact, about 40 years old. They Both the skulls have been dated to about 900 years old. And the reason that it came into Lloyd's um, um, custody is because there was a neonatal nurse and her partner or husband 
who were part of the MUFON network, which is the Mutual mm -hmm. UFO Network in America, and she recognized that this was not a deformity to do with encephalitis or any other thing that she'd ever seen, and she would know. So they have now done every single test known to humans on the deformity side and it has all come back as zero so this is very interesting mm -hmm. and now what we have we just need um, Lloyd needs a little bit more funding and time to to nail it completely it's 85 percent nailed I would say mm. but he doesn't want to bring it out in the public public um, side so, um, you know, in an official way, let's say, until he's got the 100%. But that is, the, it, it, you know, that's just going to happen. So mm. this is really exciting, guys, because we have a material. And I don't know, as Miles says, that this actually was born of a, of a human body. I don't know. This being may have landed on the planet. We don't, we don't know. We have no yeah. idea. With, with, all, with, all, with all completely unknown research, we cannot make assumptions. And it's a big mistake in this whole field to, to make any assumptions or boundaries. But it is interesting. It, it yeah. really is definitive. And also the other massive piece of evidence that there is is from Bill Chalker's work, who's an Australian biochemist. And he has been working with a gentleman whose name just escapes me at the moment. But basically he's written a book called Hair of the Alien where a gentleman had an encounter, sexual in nature, with what we would call a non-human. He found afterwards uh, – he had no memory of the event. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a little tickle. And um, – <laughs> me. And um, anyway, the DNA shows that it is very unusual and mm. non-human. Well, I think I me. think if if you want to have a bit of a cough, and if you mute your, your <laughs> if you mute uh, anyway, the point is that all all animal, all plant life, everything on this earth has got a certain range of DNA. There's a certain basic range spread spread spectrum of material that you have uh, on this earth. The point about the so-called star child uh, data is it's outside that basic locus. Mm. Oh, and that's the important, that, that's one of the important things. This is evolving technology, it's evolving experiments. Uh, the, the ability to do um, actual science on a, on a bone skull. And remember this, this skull, just for people who haven't seen it, it looks, it's humanoid, it, it looks like a grey alien skull. That's one of the problems, if you look at from the popular, the popular mm. type mm. of thing. And that's a distraction as well. The point is, the skull's very thick, but very light. Very intensely strong. Uh, the, whole, whole, the whole, the whole, the whole, I mean, the whole location of the brain, the balance of, of where the brain is, where the eyes are, are different, completely different to that of a human. So one of the main criticisms that critics have have of this whole thing and the way they dismiss it is it's simply a human skull with that skull wrapping stuff that the mm. Mexicans do. I was going to say that, the yeah. South Americans do. And they, and, uh, they dismiss it like that completely. <laughs> this is totally, absolutely different. And well, I'll tell you why it can't be cradle boarding. Just to put this to bed once mm. and for all for everybody on the planet, cradle boarding creates a flat back head. It does not create extra volume. No matter what you do to it, it will not create extra volume. The star child has 200 more uh, square centimeters of brain capacity than humans. So, you know, hey, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And this is fact, guys. Well, I, I, I did read recently that the um, smallest recorded human was actually seven inches tall. Really? Yeah, uh, uh, amazing. So, I, I, we've heard of the sort of 14 inches ones. No, but seven rough. inches. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sounds like but uh, anyway, that's enough about Lloyd Pye and his brilliant yes. work. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, he, he's... Good plug he, for you, Lloyd. <laughs> yeah. and he does, but the point is it's that evident. this is this is leading humanity into the realm of we're not the only people around here and there's physical evidence about it and we've got to wake up about the whole thing. Uh, we, we never um, make the assumption that our uh, listeners know anything about any of these subjects. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about a mash and how it started and what it is and what you do? Well, basically, uh, me, Miles Johnson, has done a thing called the Basis Series. Over a long period of time, I'm part of the Irish UFO Research Centre. Uh, me and some colleagues were researching UFOs way back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Mm -hmm. I've got a heavy involvement with the Irish pirate radio scene and the evolution of consciousness in Ireland. 
and that evolved also to Sky TV. And I was walking around one day, looking up at the sky and sort of kicking a, a, a can across the, um, the, 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 the footpath when a lovely voice came across the ether. It was Joanne Summerskate. <laughs> and she says, Miles, I think we've got a great idea here. It's the Amash Project's her idea. And she says, Miles, why don't we get together and do this thing? And I sort of said, I'm far too busy. I'm too busy. Which he always is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then eventually, you know, her overwhelming beauty and mm. smart eyes sort of said, well, I sort of fell into this thing and here we are now. <laughs> yeah, and he's doing a fantastic job, let me let me tell you. And uh, all credit to Miles, because Miles does, you know, really a lot of donkey work on this, the editing and the setting up. And, and you know, it is fantastic. And, and yes, it, it, it was, I, I birthed it, if you like, but it couldn't happen without Miles. And so, you know, we're a great team and we're <clears throat> really developing and moving ahead. And my background is, you know, I've been a therapist. I've you know, always been interested in, in human spirituality, consciousness mm. development, and um, work, and and also you know health and wellness. That's a huge another area for me. And I noticed that in my research that people were not very well with these experiences. You know, in the longer term. Interesting. And I'm very curious about that. And I want. And I don't think that's okay. Also, and I think we just. And, and I don't. You know, the secret thing is is not good, guys. You know, anything secret. Well, what's that about? Let's understand now whoever well, is this, doing this is the whole thing this is mm. why we've come up with this phrase called uh, i mean maybe people have heard of this thing called disclosure mm -hmm. uh, dr stephen greer has been pushing for disclosure yeah um, a, a close a close um, friend of uh, uh, joanne's called steve bassett has yeah, yeah been, we interviewed him a few weeks has, ago has been pushing for disclosure and he's he's essentially in the political climate of Washington, that's his focus. Yeah. But the point about this is, my, my basic point is, excuse me, but the government has been totally lying through their teeth on this for at least 100 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're going to just suddenly say, oh, we know what you've got, which means we're demanding you disclose what we know what you've got. Mm. Right? But the problem with this is we really don't know what you've got, which is why you want to tell us. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, we're then going to logically believe people who've been dis, uh, dis, disinforming and lying through their teeth on this for the last hundred years. And then we're going to say, we believe what you say. Well, that is a completely, that's a complete oxymoron. It's a bit like military intelligence. <laughs> um, what you have to, <laughs> what you have to do is mm. we have to, it is up to ordinary people now. The only way this is going to work because it's clear that the intelligence services, uh, much of the establishment, uh, so so on, has been completely contaminated by this, and are now invalid in terms of their status in terms of protecting us, as we we foolishly think that's what they're doing. We have to expose everything, and then they've got to come up with the answers as to why they've been doing what they're doing, and so it's therefore exposure, disclosure through exposure. Miles, which is what we do. Sorry. Just a quick question, Miles. When you were talking about that, there it came up to my mind. How many times a week do you get hacked or attempt to be hacked? <laughs> uh, how many are you up to? <laughs> We're, we're permanently hacked. We've got oh. both viewers dropping in, uh, mm -hmm. Joanne seeing shadow people. Oh, yeah. God, uh, that's a scary one. Mm -hmm. the, we're, we got, you've got to spot the remote viewers. You can always just often a little twinkle, sparkle of light, black light. Uh, uh, there's different ways of seeing, depending how sensitive you are. My computers are completely hacked. Um, yeah. When I'm doing edits, I have to fight off these scuttler-type life forms. Um, Something you've got to understand is that the whole Irish pirate radio and evolution of culture, the fact that you're even talking and talking about this subject mm. was all started because we had ET or non-human awareness triggers which came to Ireland in the 1970s, which is what I was initially investigating. And the whole history of broad... This is... Joanne wouldn't be aware of this side, but the whole history of what... In, because we're speaking in an Irish context... The whole evolution of the, the massive radio explosion and consciousness change in Ireland, which happened between the 70s and 80s, right up to the present day, was entirely due to the Irish waking up under what's called an intelligence transfer sequence trigger sequencer. Um, Hundreds of monkeys. Words, you're, you're given the opportunity to, uh, your consciousness is given the a massive new opportunity to leap forward. Mm. And what happened was that the Irish uh, did that. 
and everybody became much more aware. And anybody who was involved with the pirate stations, you know, right from the 70s right through to 1988, knew there was some kind of driving force. There was a sort of a thing that people got into it for. And uh, anybody who knows the history of that knows that every time the government tried shutting the stations down, the government was taken out, not the pirates. Mm, that's mm. correct. Uh, yeah. And that's part of my that's that's part of my history. I've I've published all of that on mm -hmm. video on the Irish era of pirate radio. But the mm. reason why I'm mentioning it is um, we noticed that a lot of the Irish station, the pirate stations along the Irish border, had ET issues. Interesting. Uh, uh, for instance, the first one was Radio Caroline. Yep. And where Radio Caroline was built in Carlingford Lock, there has been a great deal of ET activity. And uh, we now know uh, right across the English Channel um, in the Lake District where there's a guy there called Mike Oram, which we really want to talk to. Um, he's, he's met the Tulip people. He had a major encounter at Area 51. But also we've discovered that um, the people over there are living under a sort of a screen memory because of massive ET activity there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so this extends right across into Ireland, um, the more mountain area. There were cattle mutilations, uh, UFOs, all sorts mm. of stuff. And then where my I put on the mega, the reason why I'm called Megawatts is because I put on a Kiss FM out of Monaghan, which put a megawatt into Belfast. Mm. Because by all you guys in the south were enjoying brilliant commercial radio evolving and with full community support, and all sorts of things for like 20 years. Oh, in Belfast, we had nothing. Mm. But then we had a situation where I was asked to put things on again, and um, uh, at Energy 106, and this was this was on RTU, uh, and we had four ET abductions by the station manager, and we were we were on the air, and this is when I when I used the term scuttler, that our transmitters were being uh, accessed by these uh, black fuzzy crab spider type creatures, which disappeared as soon as you perceived them. And mm -hmm. we now know those are actually man-made constructs using ET technology, and they are information feeders and information devices, and they're pretty nasty things. And then further along the border, we're talking about um, uh, a guy who ran a pirate station instantly when all the stations closed in 88, and he ran a station called Riverside 101, and he's an abductee as well. So we have a very strong connection with commercial broadcasting and abduction and some kind of black oily type substance I need to I need oh, to just ask you one. sorry sorry no, no, no. no you you were on for a question yes, and until sorry. I heard no, no, Miles no, talk no, about no, a black oily substance don't mind me. Miles please describe to me this black oily type substance because I want to know what's coming out of the ground outside my building oh. it's coming from nowhere oh god the the the, the, the stuff the blob there's some stuff outside my building, well, Miles. I thought reason, I'd struck the, the oil. Reason why, the reason why I crammed that potted history of about 30 years into about a minute or two was because of what Joanne and I, we did this literally in the last five days, mm. yeah. which, is, Amazing uh, interview. which specifically goes into the secrets behind the Falklands War. Uh, with E.T. E.T. and E.T. based with the Argentinians in the South Atlantic and a black oily substance. I need Which to know a little bit about sentient. that. I have to tell you that the, 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 the point about this oily substance is that it is sentient, guys. Yeah, it uh -huh. Where? It, it, yeah, it has intelligence. And not only does it have intelligence, I mean, we know very little about it, but we do know that it has morphing mm -hmm. factors to Interesting. it. Interesting. And uh, it is um, from our interview. We can, that, uh, let me just make a dis distinction here, Miles, mm. with you as yeah. well. You were talking about mm. the black substance that you saw, but that was more etheric. Yes, I believe. this is very important. It's very so. Important so Miles said black oily substance. So, so not to get confused in mm. the radio transmitters and the and the things that he's seen. And and let me tell you guys, we are beginning to get. We've just had on the Amash Facebook not long ago uh, a dad talk about his son. Um, mentioning what they what he called scuttlers. Now I've never seen a scuttler myself, and it seems to be and 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 he just he said that he had never spoken to his son about anything because this was a new thing for him. Um, but his son had mentioned this being, which like was dog size, which is quite big, small dog size, and and moved at a pace very rapidly from the from your peripheral vision out. But yeah, you only see, you will only notice it on your peripheral vision. As soon as you look at it, you won't see it. 
It, it, it is. It's very interesting. But more and more people are, are coming up and just asking for information. What is this I'm seeing? So Miles has been seeing this in the transmitters and maybe it's a result of the accumulation of energy and it being tapped and the manifestation and maybe there's some controlling intelligent stuff going on there. But this sentient oil it is very very different and it is something it is the research of two years work of David Griffin from Exopolitics UK that whom we interviewed this last uh, weekend before last um, and part one and two are now up there and um, no uh, part one and two of four wow yes a four are up there and basically I had never heard before for example of of the Falklands War having anything to do relationship with the ET it also brings in the mock, strange Marconi deaths and yeah. it, which this, is, this is very important because and it, and, yeah. and the Gulf oil disaster guys this is massive this was only two years ago yeah now the, now the thing about this is that this oil has to be kept cold and that is why the British were researching this uh, way back before World War One Mm. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff going on down in Antarctica which is off planet, off world there's two phrases there, off planet, off world one is off planet is um, as in spaceship stuff off world is interdimensional portal mm. stuff and I have to say that I've seen a, a famous conspiracy author use off world technology where he literally just <laughs> blinked out and disappeared um, and a good old Texan he is as well uh, so this, this, this technology is in the public domain. It's non-human or highly advanced interdimensional technology. And we've got to realize that the sort of funny games and tricks that are being played on us, including the technology we're being forced to have in our home, like Wi-Fi and yeah. other forms of technology like that, mm -hmm. is of a very, very hostile and toxic non-human source. Mm. And the, fa the main thing that they're attacking, um, another colleague I, I interviewed was John Irwin, um, and uh, Joanne's been talking with him. He's a good old soldier type from, from 1957. So let's, let's spin back. Like There were cer certain sectors within the armed forces were aware that um, we, had a, we had an out-of-control life and death situation within our societies, within our agencies and things, and they were fighting a backdoor war to try and stop certain Illuminati type individuals gaining access to the interdimensional gateways and portals on the planet. Because as as the Earth's surface moves around and does all sorts of its sort of moving, the physical portals built mm. on in matter in our physical world Mm. They drift out of alignment from the interdimensional uh, gateways they're accessing. So what Urban was actually uh, his task force, he was just a simple, simple, naive uh, 18, 20-year-old in national service in Britain when they had to have that until 1959. And he was in the Middle East, in Syria, when they gained access to some of these special ancient technology Terrestrial we, ancient technology. I think we should just say, Miles, just to give yeah. it a context, John yeah. was one of an elite group, specially trained, one of 16. He's written a book called 16 about it. But the, this was not known. He wasn't SAS. This was beyond the SAS kind mm -hmm. of thing, just to mm. give you a marker for the sort of um, the sort of work that John was was involved in, you know, the super, super secret, super soldier kind of stuff. Oh, oh, and that's was, enough of supers for the minute. So, that, so this was is many the of point. Them. They were fighting the Illuminati in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. Now, how many people in the 1950s anywhere knew about the so-called Illuminati? Exactly. This, yeah, this almost is, This zero. is the thing that we've only... So the point is, this is going back to the 50s. We now know that, um, that, the, least. German, that the Germans were dealing with, with non-human biology, mm -hmm. biological uh, tests in the war. We've heard that. And they yep. were they were taking test samples from these uh, biological entities, uh, non-human biological entities, and testing them on different genetic groups. And this is when the Irish come into this, because the Irish, um, because of Ireland's close connection with Atlantis and things, this is why Ireland has been completely shut down for 2,000 years to stop the awareness in Ireland from emerging. And it's precisely this awareness which was switched back on in the 1970s which is why Ireland is so key to this whole thing. Um, the, the secrets in Ireland, the standing stones in Ireland, the gateways and portals all across Ireland are mm. there for mm. the, a modern Irish to learn about and understand. And all of these, 
I wouldn't say all is a bad term, but these in, these these gateways and portals all across Ireland, um, you know, if people have got to communicate with the past and the present and the future with these stones. Miles, and the, meg- the megaliths are a very important part of Ireland to wake up on and get information from. When you say portals, uh, Miles, I actually bought one of those very fancy detailed ordnance survey maps um, for for the whole area around where we are, and there are portals listed on it, and they're known as portals. It does actually say that on it. Are they the same things you're talking about? Not potholes. Not potholes. No, we've got more of those. But no, (laughs) no, 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 no. You've got to understand here that potholes are a secret plot by the Illuminati. And we've been talking about... (laughs) Just to perturb us. Now, what they do is they deliberately uh, put bad tarmac down on the the ground so you'll have these potholes (laughs) everywhere. And then what they do is when you drive over them at a particular resonant speed with a DeLorean, it screws up your flux (laughs) capacity. That's exactly what happened to me, Miles. There's such synchronicity going on here. Really My serious. DeLorean's well screwed. Yeah. <laughs> I need new shocks. Uh, Joanne, Joanne, this is called Blarney. Uh, yeah, well, I recognise it. I've known you a bit. Actually, I sidetracked you seriously. Portal. Portal. Portal, yeah. There's loads yeah. of them listed on the map. The there, but there's a wonderful series of books that people can read. They're called The uh, Ringing Cedars of Russia. Uh, by one, on a, uh, they, and it's a story of a wonderful woman in the de- depths of Siberia called Anastasia. Oh, yeah, I know of her. What's, what's happened is that around about 2,000 years ago, there was a total and absolute purge of all the wise women and wise men and sages uh, in the villages from Ireland right to the depths of Siberia. Somebody went to a great deal of trouble to absolutely destroy any intuitive or empathic people in the population yeah. that, could, that knew what was going on. So this invasion, this total shutdown of humanity has been going on a long time. We've only got to look at the slaughter of the uh, Native American Indians. Oh, yeah. There you go. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, good old St. Well. Patrick uh, purged and destroyed the Celtic Church of Ireland, uh, which had, had was, which was the, I, I don't want to get too much into this because it, it triggers too many um, emotive things, but the thing is that it was essential that Ireland's basic intuitive knowledge was shut down mm. um, and held down uh, uh, and the point about this is I'm steering this is because St. Patrick came over and he persuaded uh, people to, to go uh, away from the, the original churches, the original ancient knowledge of Ireland by burning the children of the village. In fact, he, he got so sick and tired. That'd do it, wouldn't it? Yeah, he, he sort of went back. To, he went back to Rome and says, "Look, I'm being bad. It's terrible at what I'm doing." They said, "Just go, go back and keep on doing it." Now, the point about this is, we're talking about standing stones here. That one of the pla- any place he couldn't actually purge or put a church on, he then said, "Oh, this is St. Patrick's this or it's St. Patrick's that." And this is where my pirate station was, Energy 106 and KISS FM in Monaghan. We were right beside a very wonderful place called St. Patrick's Chair and Well. In, uh, it's just, just, I think it's in County Tyrone by about 100 yards. Mm-hmm. And that is where my colleague Lawrence John went interdimensional and met other beings four times. Now, um, this is part of the Energy 106 abductions. It's been on, a, I think, a UFO program on RTE a couple of times. Uh, but the point about this is that's already going through a material morphing stage where it's changing there. Mm. And that's part of the internet interdimensional gateway thing that you're talking about on those maps. Right. Uh, and there, I mentioned, I mentioned the, uh, the singing, the ringing cedars of Russia, because these dolmens that you've got in Ireland extend the whole way into central Siberia. And the point about that is that the dolmens were created by a, a higher aware conscious protector of the community and they voluntarily they voluntarily decided to be closed up in these dolmens so they would not reincarnate so these standing stones these dolmen areas will have a person who is protecting that area against interdimensional uh, a- a- activity mm. That's to protect the local village. And if you go to a dolmen or go to these areas, always ask permission and respect the being that's there because that being has decided that they're going to stay here permanently. They're not going to, they're not going to um, reincarnate into another human body or whatever. 
and they are there to help and to protect us. Oh. And if you're able to communicate with these beings, what secrets they may be able to tell you. That's that, that, great. That's strange. Miles, you should be saying that today because I know of a local historical, um, what would you call it, organization. Um, yeah. Just nothing special. Yeah. They're interested in history. But what they're uncovering uh, all over the place is in, in Neolithic sites and little... Uh, Mm. Things like that. So uh, they're actually, these kind of things, are, they're not the big sites like Newgrange. They're yeah. all over the place. Yeah. In, well, in, in I, there's there's a stone circle two miles from where I right. live. And it's in somebody's garden. It's not listed. It's not protected. And the guy only leaves it there through decency. They're trying to find out what they are. They're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. Well, I'd yeah. like to say that Michael Tellinger, who's a researcher, yes. has been doing fantastic stuff. And his latest... Um, research is incredible. He has That's now South found Africa. this magnificent. I beg your pardon. Yes, it's this is South Africa. I was going to say that <laughs> he is he he is now of the opinion that there are ten million, ten million yeah. stones, standing stone circles. Some maybe not standing, but stone circles, which are very evident from the yeah. air, not necessarily on foot. And mm. this guy has has done some fabulous work. So what he's doing is waking up people to the fact that these are some, maybe portals, but they're certainly energy nodes on the planet, mm -hmm. and they will have connected. They do connect it all, and maybe this is what we're going through now, a reawakening. Yes. Mm. Uh, so 10 million, guys. 10 and you can, I, I find that very believable. There are dozens yeah, just but, within but five is. miles of where I am. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, well, yeah. the point about it is you mentioned detailed maps. Tellinger find a lot of this stuff on Google Google Earth. Yeah. Yes, yeah, validated. But he did the work. He did the work and then went and checked it out against Google and and, and it just blew him away. Um, mm. I mean, um, I've just returned from the crop circles yesterday and uh, the crop circles, even though I know they're made by guys with planks and boards, the oh, point about it fair is enough. <laughs> you're being steered, you're being steered to a higher level of knowledge. For instance, last yesterday, um, a friend of uh, one of my colleagues kept losing his glasses and he was in a magnificent crop circle and uh, it's called a e crop circle Etchelhampton. It's a magnificent thing and uh, also, also, also at Avebury, the standing stones there, which mm. are mimicked on Earth from Mars. Um, the there was a being there which actually led him to where his glasses were. Oh. And the same thing happened to, to me when I was videoing a... I've tried to video near a crop circle. I know the guys who make these things, but the guys who make these things themselves know that there are major paranormal events happening. For instance, um, they, when you make a crop circle in oilseed rape, it, it's like it's got very thick stalks which break very easily. That's right. And one of the things is, oh, it couldn't be a fake crop circle because, oh, well, look at the no look at the stalks. The nodes they've, bend. They've yeah. all gone down. They've all bended and stuff. Well, I mean, uh, a friend of mine, Matty Williams, made a video of the guys making these formations. And these guys are saying, look, we made this formation in oilseed rape. We broke all the stalks. It was a bit of a mess. Uh, when we went there uh, the next morning to see other people going into them, they noticed that the, that the stalks that they'd broken had complete these – these are, these are stalks like celery. You know, they mm. snap. Uh, and they completely reformed. Oh. The plants had completely reformed, and there was a there was a crop circle up in uh, Temple Patrick, up in County Antrim, and the uh, this was in long grass. This was about as natural a real crop circle as you can get, and um, the house these guys this is a new new build new house that built they built a new house they hadn't had time to redo the garden so it's very long grass, and this had formed into uh, an, a, a crop circle with a slight elliptical form to it because a lot of these things aren't totally circular and there's subtle differences and it's important mm. well they they had a one hour time at, at space time distortion effect where all clocks mechanical electric whatever wristwatches all lost an hour oh now the thing is that i uh two weeks ago dr simeon hind from the noetics institute in the united states uh he does special courses on remote viewing uh, gave a presentation at a famous inn near the crop circles called the Barge Inn in Alton Barnes. It's a wonderful old inn right beside the, the, the old canals mm. uh, in in the middle of crop circle country, uh, as we call it, uh, the East Field. And uh, it's where these huge fields exist. You can make these massive crop circles. And um, 
they were able to – they made a crop circle to determine the psychological and physiological effects on people because they made a, a – and they were given an extra hour of time in the formation – the local space time or time space changed so the guys faking the crop circle could finish it off in time before the sun. <laughs> That's wow. I, I suppose that goes towards the theory people keep saying how can they make these in such short periods of time? Because the, 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 the it's not how they're made. I always keep saying it's not mm. how they're made, it's the fact they are made. Yeah. And and you got U.S. Air Force intelligence involved. You got MI5 involved. MI6 Stanford University involved. Uh, you've got the uh, British Army involved. You got you've got you got Boscombe Down involved. I mean, for instance, Boscombe Down is one of the big secret lab type bases that Britain has, right? Mm-hmm. And it's right in the heart of crop circle country. And they've got every kind of alarm system you could possibly think: independent alarm systems, infrared beams, l- laser beams, all sorts of things to, to to check that nobody gets in and nobody mm-hmm. gets out. Well. One morning they woke up a couple of years ago and the, the, the sun came up and there it was. Big fat crop circle right between some of the most secure buildings in the British intelligence <laughs> and military thing. And they were saying, how and who did ma- made that? And yeah. A major investigation about this. Very hard for a bunch of geometry students to break in and, uh, and do that. I find exactly. it, in, I find it interesting. Then, uh, th- there's, a, there's a very close friend of ours called Richard D. Hall who's a very close friend. Oh, yes. I know Richard. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Joanne and uh, Richard get on really well. They're really close. And the thing is that um, he did a very good inf- investigation about you know the guys who fake these crop circles, mm. uh, and they all traced it back to MI5 and yeah. all the U.S. Air Force intelligence, which is a very good. Now the other thing that Richard did was a very good investigation on the Gateshead Greys, which again connects non-humans or Greys with the British military in an English town during World War II. That's well, a really interesting case. Yeah, mm-hmm. so let's yeah I've seen that. Now, let's forget this Roswell, it all happened in 1947 garbage. We're dealing with Marconi, with the Nazis, during before the war, 1930s. Marconi came to Ireland. He did special transmissions from Ireland. Now, why did he do that? Uh, it's nearer? It's nearer to America, I agree. But he did those transmissions from Ireland. Mm. And uh, Marconi connects again the Marconi company in the, in the recent past in the 1980s with this black intelligent oil from <clears throat> yes America. there's a lot of links there Marconi that are becoming evident Mar- Marconi transmitters actual transmitting and this mm-hmm. is where they have this connection between this black oil and uh, somehow there's a there's a connection with transmission mm. you, you, you've brought up a point here miles that I was going to bring up later on with you mark um, yeah and it's something I thought about and then saw the dismissed it was um symbology yeah symbology in crop circles or in the olympics or Mm. in the grammys or what have you well recently a friend of mine uh, a practicing witch right for for 30 years right um did a little spell for us okay and she sent it to me and it was a screensaver Okay, yeah. And it was, um, it had some tarot cards on it and some symbols on it and a picture of us in the middle. All right. And that was the spell. Right. You see, so I'm just wondering, maybe with the crop circles and these kind of things, is it a sort of a spell? Is it a symbol? Uh, You have absolutely hit the nail on the head. That's the point. The whole point is is who makes them. Or how they're made. And the intention. Look at them. It's the, if you look yeah. at them. Yeah. And also, what was it for? What was your spell That's for? what I was going to ask. Oh, it wasn't anything creepy. You put uh, a spell on me. I didn't even know about no, it. What's, so, what's so going I, on? I should mention these things, shouldn't it's I? It's some sort of homoerotic thing, is it? It, it was just a, a good luck. It, <laughs> it, it, it was a good luck. <laughs> it, it was a good luck spell. Yeah. So I was to look at it. Imagine uh, the white light going through my... Um, head and into it and uh, wishing us, uh, I don't know, uh, luck with no harm to anybody. Oh. But I did notice I got a boil on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is going home erotic again. Excuse me, do we is need it? to... Do yeah, we... yeah, just excuse yourselves, oh, guests. You know, got some me, are, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we paying... I've got a good for... remedy for that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> 
listen, I'm just going to go and have a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miles, going back to the black oil, which I'm seemingly obsessing about, um, is anybody testing any of that black oil? Because I'd love to this find out point. what this uh, stuff uh, is this that is the point. we have. Uh, this is the point. I've had somebody try to remote view this, and they were blocked. The oil was just stopping a remote viewer. Ah. Uh, and that's that's part of this consciousness thing, that it, it's, it, this exists one of the most important things that I've been working on is if you wanted to take over any kind of um, species or space or time space environment, one of the most important things that goes on is perception. Now, if anybody's familiar with the Young's split beam uh, experiment, Young's slits in physics. Yeah, the well, photon split one. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, all the wave that, and the particle, the joint. particle, the wave and the particle thing. Yeah. Now the point, the point about people who haven't a clue what we're talking about is, we look at things and we we see things by a photon of light coming from an object and we see, it hits our eyes and we see it. Mm -hmm. Right. A photon is meant to be a particle of light, but there's this problem. People think that light's made of waves or particles, so there's this dilemma: is it made of little bits of things coming at you, or is it made of waves coming at you? But the point about that point is about that our is, perception changes yeah, it. Yeah, our our observation of yeah. Yeah. changes it. And there's another experiment called Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's cat. cat. Yeah. <laughs> now, is the cat alive or dead if it's in the box? If you open up the box, you see the cat and it's alive. But the cat could have been dead. Or was the cat alive? So there's this sort of question. Until you see it or, or cognizize it, more important, cognizing it, uh, is the thing there or not? So the mm. point about it is that if you were able, to, if you are able to access the very barrier, the very area where we cognize things, you can then directly engineer what we cognize, and then, according mm. to the physics, mm. you can directly engineer the mm. reality we are bringing into being all the time. Yeah, I mean, literally, you generate your own reality. Yeah. If you if you then network a whole consciousness or a whole global planet of people, and you're able to somehow access that network and then tell the network you don't exist. Mm. In other words, if you're, if, you're running, if you're running 13 terminals at work, or 15 or 20 terminals at work, and then you can, you're in the network, and you tell the network that you don't exist, and you, only, you have 15 terminals, but any, everybody only ever sees 14 terminals, Right? then the rogue terminal can actually send messages to the other terminals and they think it's coming from them because there's no other buddy there, mm. nobody else there. So if you want to access humanity and deal with it or change it or, or even terraform mm. the whole planet, yep. what you would do is you would access our consciousness. Now, the clue about this oil is it, it's affected with consciousness. Consciousness or thoughts affect it. The thing about scuttlers is they are thought based uh, i mean i spoke to alara blackwell who's one of the people i interviewed and I've, i put up as a as an educational supplement uh, but the point about this she's one of the people along with what joanne was mentioning earlier about the scuttler thing um mm -hmm. the reason why i mentioned the scuttlers was because i had them attacking the valves and the transmitters at, uh, at energy 106 mm. the, that was in response to the hacking question you asked mm. a lot earlier yeah um, the, now, the point about the scuttlers is they are information-based technologies. They infest computer systems. And Alara was explaining that they, the tentacles or the tendrils of the scuttler goes through the skull into the pituitary gland mm -hmm. and surrounds that. And John Irwin has been talking about how the various toxins and chemicals being put into our food affects the pituitary gland Correct. in humans. Now, what... what Erwin is saying, Erwin was told this by a strange, different human-looking officer in his little core of 16. The 16, it's called. Mm -hmm. Now, the point about this is that when the baby gets to a certain level, the pituitary gland reaches a certain level of, of maturity, and it sends out a little singing signal. It says, hello, I'm ready to accept a soul. Okay? Now, what Ehrman is suggesting and others are suggesting is that by attacking or changing that pituitary gland in humans, when it sends a signal, the signal is changed so that whatever soul that enters the baby 
isn't going to be a human soul. It's going to be something else. Ah. Or maybe very, or maybe viable to be to be overshadowed. And listen, I have to tell you that the pituitary gland is constantly attacked by guess what? Fluoride. Fluoride, yeah. And what and what's everybody doing? They're put. What are all the government bodies wanting to do? They're putting fluoride in the water, and that calcifies the pineal gland, the pituitary. That changes and, its resonant frequency yeah. and stops it from operating. So, you know, it does look like there is a program of, afoot. And just going back to this oil, um, this oil, um, the British have clearly known about it, at least since the Falklands, probably long before, which was, you know, one of the reasons that we went in there so so high and so heavy. I mm. thought they were uh, there from World War One. They were doing work on it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, yes, but we've, you know, it, it comes in, in a, you know, from David's research, it really comes into, into view from what we understand from this, uh, the end of the, from the war, from the Falklands War. But also this sentient oil, it basically Basically, where it's located is deep beneath the seabed, ah. where it is highly pressurized in a very cold environment. Yeah, that's the important thing. This is it, it, it's got it's, it's got to be kept cold and kept under pressure. Now, when it is released above the temperature where it is inert or dormant, and it is, and then it also mixes with the sea. Apparently, the sea water, and think how much of our planet is covered by sea. It begins to come alive, and it begins to morph now intelligently now we don't know if it's a bit like a prometheus ki film kind of scenario i haven't actually seen prometheus the film yet mm. but miles and others have been telling me and maybe you guys have already seen it that this is you know no. this thing of but in plain sight mm. we're doing this and so they have to tell you they being the cabal the illuminati yeah. whoever is running the planet on the negative um and using us as expendable uh, resources or chattel um, they have to show us in plain sight. So a lot of the ways they're doing that's, it is that's through part Hollywood. That's the rules of the game. And, yeah. And, and the point about it is by introducing the concept to your consciousness, they then can have a tag on your consciousness. Mm -hmm. So so this, it, what's very interesting is this came to light in, in the Gulf oil disaster because uh, in France there was a young lady working at the diplomatic or at the embassy in the diplomatic service and her boyfriend had uh, borrowed her laptop which was cleared for something called DED which is digital emergency scrambling channel uh, device mm -hmm. and this is normally very quiet <clears throat> and it is an emergency um, channel for um, any country who wanted to sign up for it and also it filters down into society into service providers like the fire service the emergency providers <clears throat> but clearly they're all briefed mm. that this is and what it, what this is about this DED channel if this Basically, is activated yeah, an, an, an emergency communication channel that everybody can for fast all fast response of access. yeah for fast response really super fast response it, by it, the it, people who matter and, and it th also it also means it, it you don't need any codes to receive it no if, that's right when you're transmitting on that channel this is an emergency Miles yeah. is, is that via satellite. I, I don't know how it gets to people. Mm. We don't know. I, I guess it. I guess it must be because there was a huge. Suddenly, this guy saw all this chatter going on, and basically, the upshot of the chatter was that um, the French. Uh, there were in the Gulf oil disaster. There were thirty nations with ten percent of the world's submarine fleets in attendance. Do we know about this in the Daily Mail or mm, no. you know New York no, Times? I think, no. I think we have to basically ignore all current media because they're. No, but mm, I'm, I'm just saying this is how. And this is how you know it's being kept away from the public view. And as David said, David uh, Griffin from Exopolitics said when he first started the interview, this sounds so sci-fi and so ridiculous. Yeah. He said, but when I got to the, you know, to grips with it, it was. It, he said it's actually become something we really need to know about and, and quite scary. And we we have to be informed about this. Basically, uh, th we feel we th the idea is is that the Horizon Deep Well drill wa uh, oil platform was sabotaged mm -hmm. and releasing this sentient oil, which a French sub had managed to get a sample of, known oh. as Cargo B. And there's a Nexus article about this uh, hmm. from the August that's, September. That's Nexus magazine. Nexus. It's available online. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it, it again the point about this is we have to put a, a, a caveat on this. We don't know whether this is science fiction in itself. That's right. Mm. Uh, but the point is you, can, you have to start looking where the, where the, uh, 
where the splodges hit the wall and what sort of pattern you're getting from it. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, 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 you then I, have to use your intuition and, and, and make a couple of leaps of faith on some of this stuff. I, I, I always say to you, Mark, that a light bulb is science fiction to a caveman. <laughs> so it's just about, <laughs> it a, about, it's about understanding. While well, I've got the two of you here, I'm, I'm just thinking... Between both of you, I don't. I, I can only imagine the amount of interviews you've carried out with uh, abductees, contactees, experiences, whatever you want to call them. Is there a common thread? Yeah. R- r- is there some a common thread amongst all of those? We've noticed it with our guests, certainly. Well, the common thread I would put in there. There's two threads. One is the military's in there somewhere. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. That's why there's a my lab thing on it. And and let's face it. Logically speaking, if you've got people being abducted, then the military would be involved because they're keeping tabs on the abductees. The difference is that the military seem to be the problem. That they've, they've, the first line of the outer walls of the citadel have been breached. Okay. Hmm. One of the, one of the one, main. The other one is Jin, yeah. which is. Um, I don't know about Jin. Is what? Sorry. Yeah. I, I know. The, the thing is. Jin. Uh, the Jin. D J I N N. Yeah. The Jin. As- the, Ar- the Arab uh, demon? Yes, yes. All right. The, yes. The clue to this is that Western, uh, so-called Western society, which is essentially a Christio, um judaic society uh, for the last 2,000 odd or 3,000 or whatever it's 1,000 years, mm. the one thing we have not been told in our fairy tales and culture mm. is that are these shadow beings, the jinn, the, the fast-moving Things and all of all of all are yeah. all are you know, the jinn are simply uh, what the Muslim and Eastern and and no, i.e. everybody else except us, or the so-called Western societies, everybody else except us, the so-called Western societies knows about these in the fairy tales and their religious teachings. Now the point about it is, effectively, jinn is just a, a far Eastern way of saying alien, what we now call alien. But ah. the point about it is the shadow element to this and the the deviousness and the, the, the structure to this has been researched by uh, Rosemary Ellen Guiley, who has published a work on it. And she spent a long time researching this in the Middle East and the Far East. Uh, and there are a lot of markers which fit, uh, including crop circle people. When they're making crop circles, they encounter black shadow people. Yeah. Now, uh, we mentioned this on... Um, one of our few of several of our interviews, mm. Joanne's had a few encounters with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, one. Uh, uh, and the um, I think Simon Parks the, mentioned the, something that sounds that, like that as well. You, ask common, you ask for common factors. That is a common factor. Now I, I, I've been speaking about the gene a little bit too much, possibly, and I, uh, but there's too much of a coincidence yeah. there. The descriptions <laughs> of some of the people is that what they're describing are exactly gin. But if it's something that keeps coming up, how mm. can you ignore it? Well, the point about the gin is that they were banished. According to legend, the, the gin were humiliated by King Solomon in the building of King Solomon's temple. Okay. Uh, this goes back to the seeding of humanity, and according to the basic legend is that God said that the angels... Uh, the angels and the jinn would cooperate with the new kid on the block. The new kid on the block was humanity. The jinn were basically not responsive to this, and they said, well, we're not going to do this, you know, whatever. So King Solomon then uh, el- el- humiliated the leaders of the jinn. The jinn were then banished. But they were banished to a dimension where they would not ever be, uh, have, be involved with us. Now, one of the problems about this is oil. Because the jinn are released through smokeless fire. That's one of the keys to how they come in here, into our mm. dimension, reality, our existence. And um, it's possible that the use of fossil fuels and burning up of oil mm. it is, is in itself the mechanism how they're being progressively released into our dimensional reality. Now, some people have said, once you start digging up stones and and crystalline strict creatures and structures you are releasing their spirit to our our dimension uh, just people have crystals uh you know quartz crystals people can see the living energy within a quartz crystal uh, so there's a whole lot of issues there and the point is we're living in a multi-dimensional environment and we've got to get out of our three-dimensional thinking and not be scared about looking out of the box basically mm-hmm. you know 
I, I would like to say that uh, a common factor to all of the, on, on a practical uh, aspect, to to abductees, I'm using that word advisedly mm -hmm. because Simon Parks would say that he was an abductee until he realized that he wasn't, you know, that there had been an agreement and so mm. he now calls himself a contactee and he's much more consciously interfacing. However, in the initial stages or phases of anybody's interaction, it seems that it is um, involuntary, that it is something that they cannot stop. There are one or two people who have managed to say no to it. Um, and that has been maintained, um, but oh. the, uh, many people are, are taken uh, and they have a hard time with that. Not everybody's ex everybody learns from their experience. You know, we all learn from everything. So let's just say that. But a lot of people, the way that's interfacing with humanity generally, as far as we're seeing and from the research we've done, it is something that is happening to them. It is something that they are mainly unconscious about. There are some people who have conscious memories, but even they won't be 100% of the, the full experience. There'll be maybe a 20 or 30%, maybe a bit more, but not much more. And then those like Simon and others who have memories of childhood and then are triggered in later years with great downloads, like a piece of software being activated, uh, remember a lot of things. And now that can take them two ways. It can take them into total fear or it can take them into an embracing like Simon and go, let's work with this. This is clearly something I'm here to do. So um, the thing that I'm very interested in is to understand why so many people are so poorly Having been having had a lot of interfacing and interaction with I mean, these Chantel, beings, Chantel losing so much weight is an example of that. Yeah, and people are having arthritis. Michael mm. Oram um, Miles, who you mentioned, has something called uh, severe neu um, peripheral neuropathy. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, arthritis is 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 a, is a parasitic condition, and therefore you can get rid of it. Huh? Yes, if you I have mean, a, if you have a Royal Rife machine. This is it, you know. It's the thing is, we're, we're finding ill health. We're, we're fi I mean, it may not. It may be that they don't get viruses and they don't get that kind of thing, but they do get mechanical things, um, back problems. Hmm. And ladies have so many gynecological problems. Poor Chantel, good grief, and and many others. They're constantly having to go to get wombs cauterized because they're bleeding, you know, after an event and this kind of thing. Um, so, you know, the human body is taking a big hitting. So clearly there's a huge biological issue here, to, you know, to do with whatever this other level of intelligence is interfacing. And we have to about. say that you don't report you've been abducted to a doctor because we now know we now know that the medical... They tend to section you. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking that. Yeah. And, uh, the, thing, the, the one thing we've got to understand here that people can be seduced or conned into signing a, what's called a contract. And that's a very important thing. You give your permissions and barriers, your, your boundaries away, if you, if mm -hmm. you agree to a contract. Yeah. So and you're talking that, about a contract with these others, are you, Miles? Yes. Uh, as we were all going to be introduced to a contract at a recent event that we managed to avoid. But this is one yes. of the ways of giving your permissions away. Uh, you agree to things. If you don't, so this is how you defend yourself. You simply do not agree. You do not allow them to mm. come to your to violate your boundaries. Yes. You have create your boundaries. Your boundaries are infinite. They're total and they're strong. Uh, Stepping into your sovereign being, I yeah, would say. Yeah. So it, yeah. again, you don't and, and you deny them access. For instance, I've repeated this story a number of times. Uh, British intelligence um, uh, basically press ganged a, a particular. Um, individual in, in, in Belfast into being a remote viewer for them and uh, this is where he was able to in order to bring him into the fold in order to do this work in Ireland uh, uh, this remote viewing work uh, with the aliens and all sorts of stuff I, I, get, I mean I, I'm using the term ET and aliens but just because it's an easier way of describing them so that, that make absolutely no no qualms about it that the, the Irish secret services and the uh, British secret services they're all in this to together. Uh, the whole lot, everybody is dealing with the alien situation globally. Okay. Okay. So let's grow up, smell the coffee, and realize this is going on. <laughs> they're doing it. It's involved. They're doing the work. They're aware of the off planet, in planet, and extra dimensional. All those sort of levels. As uh, as so let's let's just realize this is going on. So when you have skeptics saying it ain't happening, 
Well, they're just saying, just go and, you know, that, that's... I, I, it, I can tell it, you another common factor with uh, abductees is um, they all seem to have extra sensory abilities yes. of, a, of a high nature, mm -hmm. and they are also generally able to compute and download material at mm -hmm. a rate of knots that certainly I am not able to, and they're able to um, access concepts and physics um, to, a, to a astonishing degree. And, you know, a young lady I've been speaking to recently, um, she said, Joanne, I've, I've been a member of Mensa for a long time. Well, I, she didn't even have to tell me that. I knew she was just by the structure of her well, language and the see, concept th she this used. Is, this is the point about Mensa is it's actually a little, a little means of, of finding out who's, who's smart enough to operate in various realms of the intelligence agencies. And well, I would like to also, as a caveat, just say that she told me that, I don't know if it's last year or the year before, so just very recently, guess what Mensa did? They, they did a DNA test of, of their, uh -huh. their members, eh? So uh -huh. what for? Actually, yeah. while you're both here, it, it's very yeah. fortunate for me because about <clears throat> three weeks ago, yeah, I was uh, in the studio here with Mark and we were interviewing a certain person. Yes. And I think... Um, I, I was stuck to my chair. I couldn't get a word out uh, because it was the most extraordinary thing I'd ever heard <laughs> in my life. Go on. And I am, of course, speaking of Simon Parks. And oh, what yeah. do you guys Brilliant. think, make of it? Oh, my God. I think he's one of the most... I think he, he is really incredible. I think he is brave beyond words. And I think he has stepped into his sovereignty to fulfill whatever he's come here to do. And you know what? I go on record as saying I'm absolutely 100% behind Simon and I absolutely believe the truth of him. He, I really do. He, well, another he, colleague during, yeah. I don't know if people have seen all four interviews. There's the four, there's the three main interviews and then there's the uh, therapy session that um, That's right. jo mm. Joanne did. Now, the point about it is during the third interview, a close co friend of mine called Winston Keach, Win Keach, who's done a great deal of crop circle research, he's one of the people who's got very low-level light material of where, how these seven-foot-tall shadow beings materialize and, and interface and to deal with the circle makers uh, in Wiltshire. Uh, but um, whilst we were doing the interview, Joanne was interviewing uh, Win, and Win was there and whatever it is. Wynn and Simon were having their own little side, little playful battle where, where Simon was trying to get inside Wynn's mind. Uh -huh. Wynn was putting up his own firewalls to stop Simon getting in. And so while they're having this little conversation with, with, with Joanne and you know, the rest of us on camera, they're having this little uh, side war going on between each other, this little play, play act. And this is very important because I mentioned the term firewalls. You can, uh, one of the things we haven't really talked about so far is mind control. And that's the first three initials of uh, the, the Amash thing, anomalous mind management, is that the level of mind control, the level of uh, where this is attacking us and controlling us through popular music, country and western music, mm. all, all types of yeah. music, the pop, the X, the X, I, I don't want to mention any trade names here, okay. but this is one of the crucial we things where we and yeah, we the mind. pirate radio movement and Radio Caroline, um, they, with Caroline, they used a, a basic thought essence of loving awareness, and that was key coded through the music and the transmission system. Uh, the whole thing happened in, in Ireland. That the whole thing, awareness came up with the broadcasting because of the the higher awareness being thought by the disc jockeys as they played the music. Uh, and many of the characters in that story became healers, much higher aware. And that's why the whole thing had to be clamped down and shut down and to make people, there's a, a sort of very restricted levels of music allowed to be played. That's right, playlist. Uh, and they come from certain sources with 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 the close down of the pirates in Ireland, uh, the offshore pirates, BBC the BBC brought out Radio One, that was only available on medium wave for very important reasons because medium wave amplitude modulated radio was a very easy way of telepathic thought control, mm -hmm. and the kind of um, music that was being designed that could only be played on Radio One. It had to be for Radio 1, because if you didn't get it on the BBC, because commercial radio was practically inane and irrelevant um, in, in, in the UK. And, 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 of course, in Ireland, you didn't have it. You only had RTE. But um, uh, that was a particular way of controlling compliance throughout the British Isles. Mm. It was interesting that the British uh, band 
the dance music stations which were pounding into uh, into the British Isles uh, in in the 1930s. So while they, and this is the, the last survivor of that was Radio Luxembourg, and of course Radio Luxembourg went on to do the all the Astra satellites which we all now use for um, our television today. Uh, mm-hmm. But since since my research at Sky works out that they've infiltrated there, and um, that's another story. But well, I'd just like to bring in on the music side, Miles. Yes. Do you remember we interviewed um, the lovely man Jeff Scott, who had uh, been very involved in, in raves and music and all that kind mm. of thing and had met a Pleiadian, according to yeah. his perceptions. And um, anyway, on the back of that interview, I had a, a call from a guy, a contact from a guy in America who said, Joanne, I've just seen Jeff's interview. And on the back of that, I'd really like to speak to you. I'm not going to go public, but I'd like to speak to you because after 12 years, I want to go. I want to tell somebody about what's been happening to me or what has happened to me through the rave scene and what's absolutely amazing, guys. And, you know, I am mm-hmm. so far from the rave scene. It's, you know, I really am. So. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't saying, say that, Joanne. I've seen you after, you know, you can see you after. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but listen, let, just, to say, just to explain that, it, yeah. it means I would have no awareness about what that would mean. And so what it, and then when this guy told me, I, it, the penny drop, big star, and I tell you, I'm now very wide awake to the whole music thing, which also Kathy Morgan, one of our speakers at our forthcoming conference at the, on the 1st of September at the Britannia Hotel in Nottingham, um, and we'll talk about that a bit later. But uh, so music and mind control and what, what this guy in America was telling me and for hours we were on the phone, he said, um, you know, because if you think what happens at a, at a rave, a lot of people are taking consciousness uh, altering Drugs. substances. Yeah, mm, yeah. Well, it doesn't matter what we call them, but anyway, it changes the consciousness, it changes the dimensional frequency. And he was seeing people manifesting and morphing right in front of his eyes. Ah. And the wildest ah. things, he, th- there, were, there was also some military involvement, let me tell you, as there was with Jeff Scott. Uh, Jeff Scott is in the UK. He's, a, he's uh, in the Reading area and has also talked about you know, secret bases down there, which is really interesting. And this other guy in America, I mean, I'm telling you guys, there's a lot of delivery and also opportunistic um, dimensional hopping by these others who also are sampling what we're doing and accessing our consciousness through that that awareness that we we go into those situations with and the music vibration itself is a is a wave carrier as we know it, it's phenomenal well, I guys think, mm. I think this is huge uh, i think it's very important for researchers to note the way the amplified beat music i mean uh the way the beatles uh i mean it was the the, the, the way the beatles spice girls the way all these all these groups manufactured. Have, got, I'm getting very popular phone calls now. Whatever <laughs> we're doing, gosh, you're getting two people calling at the same time. That's okay. Uh, we, we'll uh, <laughs> and the reason for that is one of the people who who was just calling there is um, a very perceptive individual who is aware of an awful lot of the stuff. In fact, I got the name Scuttler uh, on that individual. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's funny. Because I, I, I deliberately put all this out there so that I, you know, people can say, oh, well, I've seen that kind of thing. Anyway, I've just forgotten what I was saying. Yes, We're talking about a control through music. There's a, certain, there's a certain rhythmic yeah. connection with the, the beats and the tones. And this is encoded in ain't, ain't, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Gregorian chants. I've heard, uh, I've, I've heard of uh, popular music being based on very old monk chants and this kind of thing. Hold mm. on. Hello? Hello, Joanne, are you there? Yeah, well, we'll just carry on without him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just, 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 give, just give me a second. Guys, can you just tell me um, what, uh, uh, not that I want to curtail anything, I've just got something else coming in. Yeah, yeah, we, we've, we've, we've gone, to, we've gone over finish? time, Joanne, but we just thought we'd let you oh, yeah. uh, naturally run out, basically. Actually, I'll tell you what. <laughs> naturally run out. Listen, guys. Yeah, I wasn't sure again. if we were paying for the full argument or the full... Or <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, can I just, before we go, because I, I have to go now, I have to yeah. do, I have okay. something else to do, but can I just, and, and perhaps, Miles, you can, you can just talk about this a, a bit. We've, our website is uh, www.amash.co.uk and you can mm-hmm. email us at uh, amash at hotmail.co.uk. Tell us anything you're up to or anything you're doing, any, yes. any site. Give us a small yeah. little conference at the end of the month in Nottingham at the Britannia Hotel no, Nottingham mm-hmm. on September the 1st. Excellent. And that is 9.30am to 9.30pm, do we've got 
we've got uh, not only do we have researchers, but we've got a, a raft of experiences, including Simon Park. So, yeah, yeah. folks, um, come along and see us. You can buy tickets online. Um, if you do come on the day, uh, I'm, I'm sorry we can't take any cards. You'd need to bring cash, but that's just the way it is. Do it online if you can so we know more numbers. The Britannia Hotel is right in, in the city centre of Nottingham, old Robin Hood country. Mm -hmm. It's extremely accessible. And if you came in by train, the, 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 it's, a, it's about 10 minutes walk from the station to the hotel or, or less than a five a taxi ride or you can get the tram up and from the marketplace which is the centre of Nottingham it's a five six minute walk um, it's very easy and very accessible it's St James Street Nottingham it is um, as I said 9.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Uh, we'll have an hour for lunch and a couple of little breaks in there um, you'll be able to speak to these experiences and researchers yourself um, and this is something that we need to do, folks. We need to bring this out into the um, And we need your support. We need you to, to come and be with us. We need you to, to support our people like Simon, mm -hmm. Miles and myself, who are doing our very best to put, you know, to, to make all this uh, uh, accessible. No, Joanne, 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 sorry, Joanne, we're doing our very, 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 <laughs> very, very, very best. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Anyway, I'm going to leave a number um, and perhaps you can... Oh, yeah, yeah, please, give, give as many details do, as you yeah. like. Yeah, and I'll just do Amash at uh, Hotmail uh, at... Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's a mash. Uh, the oh, the videos are available for free on YouTube, YouTube. on Megawatts one zero six six. Yeah, and the uh, there's some of them available. Uh, we've tried to because YouTube restrict the length of time you can do things. They're also on the Amash mm -hmm. on YouTube, but uh, that means re editing. So we're putting a whole lot out on on YouTube on uh, Megawatts ten sixty six. Yep. They're also going to be starting to air on. Paradigm Shift TV on Sky Channel 191. Yep. That's in September. Uh, and we're very, very grateful to the guys at Paradigm Shift TV. They, it is Paradigm Shift TV, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It is indeed. It uh, is, Dr. They Steve. are working, again, uh, very hard to get, uh, quote, the message out. And we're very grateful for that, that team, very good people, to, to uh, allow us to uh, put our initial set of programs out on that. Lovely. And hopefully that'll develop into something on the telly. But I think you need to subscribe to Sky to see Paradigm Shift TV. No, it's free, actually. Yeah, the, the, one of the channels is free. There's two. No, two, they're, no, they're yeah. all free. Oh, there's, there's two free, there. Yeah, so free, well, yeah. guys, uh, I'm going to throw this out into the arena as well. Miles and I were discussing before we were on air today about having, our, our, you know, an Amash, an Amash radio. Well, you know, our, the nature of our work means that we can't do all that hosting we can be involved but can't do all the hosting all the time so if you know anyone or you'd like to become part of amash tv or, ha or amash radio rather um, you know let us know because oh, we uh, need to expand we'll, we'll talk to you about that I, afterwards I then we'll I see used to be able to i used to be able to <laughs> sneak on a one megawatt transmitter on the irish border every so often for night than i knew <laughs> you're just sneaking it on the air you know I know. So uh, anyway, we're, we're just putting it out there, uh, you know, and anybody also who wants to do any support group with us behind them, the Amash support groups for mm -hmm. people around the country, for, you know, because we are only two people and we've got a lot of yeah. abilities and skills and, and mm -hmm. access to other contactees. But, yeah. we, you know, we are all just who we are. Um, and if anybody wants to fund us, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, we have that conversation with the public a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. But if you think this is important and, you know, you think it's valuable because, you know, we are at the coalface here, the cutting edge of information. And it is, you know, disclosure through exposure. And this is what we're doing. Miles and I are giving people a, a safe public platform in which to tell yeah, us. I'd degree. actually like to just really make it very clear. we some people are saying we're just giving people the opportunity, like a freak show. You know, get, yeah, get same nutter, here. We get that. Get every nutter that you can think of. Mm. Give them, give them an hour, and mm -hmm. they can rattle on and say what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Well, listen. Let me tell you. Let those human issue have these Miles, Miles, you've gone way over an hour. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on, go on. <laughs> hey, okay. um, I'm going to say good goodbye and thank yes, you. Yes, thanks, to Joanne. Oh, 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 and, uh, oh, it's uh, fantastic. And Joanne, uh, yeah, let, let's do something hopefully in the future among the four of us. And uh, we also may see you on PSTV. We've been in <laughs> negotiations, but we we don't know if we'll make it. We, we don't know. <laughs> We may be just too shabby, who knows? We might be a bit too shabby. We are a bit shabby. <laughs> but it, 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 it's been a, a wonderful uh, day for the Outlaw Hour to have two of these titans. Exactly. Of truth 
and disclosure. Titans of truth. Today. Titans of truth. My God, you just coined something which I think is going to become quite famous. <laughs> How We're annoying. Totties. We're totties. <laughs> what a pleasure. What a pleasure. <laughs> right. Well, uh, uh, well, I suppose it's probably good just to round up as well. Say good night. God bless. Yeah. Since we're on to an hour and a half, is that a convenient time to say goodnight? It's all good. Yeah. Oh, why not? It's all <laughs> good. Ask, I don't know where you're based, which part of the country you're based. We, we don't like to say. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're actually okay. in a small cupboard in the southeast of Ireland. <laughs> Fabulous. Love it. <laughs> Beautiful place, Wexford. Great, great place. It's okay. I, it. I like the ferry anyway. The ferry's it, good. It's nice to visit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm going to say goodbye. Okay. Thank, thank you, you to you both. Um, thank you to you both. Oh. And we'll, we'll hopefully get you on again. What a show. And please come back on. Talk to us if you ever yeah. have time. It's been so much fun. It's been so energetic. Yeah. It's been so full of information. Brilliant. My God. Thank we you to need both to of you. Schedule it, guys, because we we you know we're just crazy busy, and, and yeah. if you say you know two months time, give us a date, and that's how best to do it. Really. Lovely, brilliant. <laughs> okay. Good, good night <laughs> and God bless. Thanks both. Good night and God bless. See you later. Be good. See you both. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Wow. Ooh, it just went. Whoa. That went a bit. <laughs> All over the place. That's what we want. I didn't think we were going to talk about any of that stuff. Did we go over time? We went a little bit over time, about half an hour. Uh, it's the, it's the out there hour and a half. Oh, uh, I think we better say goodbye. Yeah, we better blow this joint. <laughs> That's been fun. Hey, it's been fun. Yeah, it's been wow. brilliant. Very, very interesting. Believe, Completely different subjects. Can't believe, I, thought we I can't have believe we've got both of them on at the same time. Yeah, that was a bit of luck, wasn't it? I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, uh, I hope you're happy too, the out there. Our listeners on uh, and the uh, Alternative Future Radio yeah. uh, listeners, and thanks very much for your support, your emails, your your Facebook messages, your likes, your comments. We your, like it all. Oh, uh, Keep it coming. Contact us. Details coming shortly. Goodbye, everybody. AlternativeFutureRadio.com. Stalk us on Twitter at OutThereHour. Send hate mail to helpdesk at AlternativeFutureRadio.com. Insult us at Facebook.com forward slash OutThereHour. Troll us on YouTube.com forward slash AFRadioYT. Send us questions for upcoming guests, make requests, or just complain. It's all good. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. You're listening to Alternative Future Radio, home of the weird, resting place of the paranormal. We'll take you to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Strange phenomena, aliens, psychics, cryptozoology, conspiracy, holistic health, and UFOs. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. Nikola Tesla's work was completely trashed in the early part of the century and therefore for instance Nikola Tesla was doing communication and his assistants were communicating uh, or as it's claimed with other beings and he was transmitting at 30 to 40 times the speed of light yeah uh, and also assumes that the that the spe- uh, Ava which uh, 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 Joanne interviewed in the Amash, Pro- Amash reports project from Prague on uh, uh, episode 4 um Ava Zemanova, which is a thing Barry King brought in from Prague, she brings in the seeding of humanity a long time ago. But her her basic postulation is that there are many different time-space fields in the universe, and it's a bit like the weather system. It's a bit like assuming that the but weather... That all makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's a bit quite like, logical. It's, yeah, it's all very, very logical. So it's a bit like saying that the weather must be exactly the same all of the entire planet Earth with no variations. Mm. And the astronomers are saying, well, you know, the universe has got exactly the same characteristics over the entire universe. We know what the whole thing does, and but we don't know 95% of it, but we know what everything does. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Mm. Mm. So if you have multiple different time-space fields, then aliens or non-humans could very well exist as matter, from a different time well, space field. When we, there, we when, could be invisible or whatever, you know. When we speak to abductees or contactees or whatever you want to call them, or experiencers. That's another name. Mm. Another yeah, the name. names have confused us to hell. Um, they're talking about other dimensional or mm-hmm. interdimensional beings. Yeah. Uh, they're not talking about spaceships as such. They may not have gone anywhere. They may have just moved sideways. Yeah. 
Yes, exactly. That that's really what seems to be become be becoming the consensus of uh, from you know all the interviews we've done so far, um, and I, I really think that that really is is you know again we have to look at that. It's just you know a millimeter in front of our nose, perhaps or less than that, um, at another frequency. Yeah. But it is very real, nonetheless, and tangible. And, you know, and if you also just look at the work of another of uh, a great researcher, is that of Lloyd Pye, who has been working with the Star Child. I don't know whether you folks have interviewed him. No, but, I've, um, uh, I sent him a message. I'm still awaiting a reply. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to Alternative Future Radio, home of the weird, resting place of the paranormal. We'll take you to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Strange phenomena, aliens, psychics, cryptozoology, conspiracy, holistic health, and UFOs. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. Good morning. Welcome. To the Out There Hour. The Out There Hour on Alternative Future Radio. The Out There Hour with Basil and Mark. www.alternativefutureradio.com Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. The Middle East. Africa. Everybody in between. Europe. There's not much in between the Middle East and Africa, is there really? Brighton, Yes. Not only have we got one amazing uh, guest today... We, it's buy one, get one free today. We've, we've got two, Bog off. two titans of truth. Titans of truth. Um, from the United Kingdom. You heard that pun? Not pun. Buzzword? Buzzword. Here first. You heard it here first? Yeah. Um, yeah, not just one guest today, two incredible guests. Yeah. Uh, uh, years and years and years of experience in the... Oh, uh, between them, certainly, yeah. Contactee, abductee, experience of field in the United Kingdom. If you're somebody who's not even that interested in the abductee, contactee uh, field, still listen, because today's guests have got insights into all sorts of much more earthly and grounded uh, goings-on and maybe a possible uh, non-terrestrial connection. And something different and something yeah. interesting on crop circles. Yeah. And what they may actually mean and yeah. how they may actually be. Yeah. Ah. All sorts of funny business. Uh, I liked it, actually. Yeah, very, very good. Amash. Amash, yeah. What's the website? Amash.co.uk, I believe. Um, A-M-M-A-C-H. Amash was created to help address the vacuum in the United Kingdom that exists in respect of being an official body mm. where people experiencing alien abduction are. <laughs> yeah, well, well, Lloyd is over in the UK shortly, guys, so you really need to get a hold of him uh-huh. and I can help you do that. But anyway, um, but Lloyd's work is, 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 is really going to be a benchmark uh, watershed for, for, for the evidence. Because yeah, this is important he- because it's nuts and bolts stuff. It's not anything in your imagination. No, it, it absolutely is, and uh, and he he is a pion- real pioneer, and he like all of us are doing all of this research and hard work and hours and hours of time but and effort in, in on essence, fresh air. In in essence, what happened is that um, a nurse or a, a young lady uh, in Mexico uh, found two totally intact skeletons in a, a totally dry environment in a cave in Mexico. She collected all the bones and was bringing them back. Uh, the crucial thing, one of these, the skulls and the, the, the skeleton of one of these was completely different. Mm. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a male and a female who were embraced and buried, but the, but the strange looking one was covered in earth. Uh, and cutting a very long story short, it means that Lloyd Pye has got a human and a non-human looking skull, mm-hmm. physically, physical bone skull. It is a non-human. Yeah. I can tell you definitively yeah. it is now. I'll go on record yeah. as saying and it. Now, it's, it's been mistakenly, as Lloyd has said, um, the, called a star child. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, over the last 10 or 15 years, he's been doing an awful lot of experiments on this, and it's taken a, a whole, his whole life since then. And the analysis is revealing that it's got um, non-human DNA in it, but it's very important that the way this has been done, it's been done... In With a geneticist to, it's, it's, as well. In other words, research. that they've done a zygote. They've essentially done an, an, an implantation, an artificially implanted, 
you know, when you're having, uh, if you can't have children, in order for your genetic material to be carried into the child, what they do is they take the egg of a, of a normal, valid, uh, healthy woman, take her internal DNA out of the egg, put the DNA, now I've got to be careful here, I'm probably using the wrong terms, but you take the, your genetic material of the mm. father in, or, or, into the um, egg um, of the woman so that there is the actual DNA of, uh, or the chromosome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no comment on that, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a funny hour. Um, well, now, we're, we're doubly <laughs> blessed to have Miles Johnson and Joanne Summerscales today. I mean, how exciting. Yes. Uh, Miles, uh, between you and uh, Joanne, you've, you've really triggered quite a lot of our previous guests. We watched some of your videos and thought, we want some of that. Well, it was very interesting because we've had a bit of a busy morning. I had John Lear, Skyping with John Lear this morning, and that's in response to the most recent thing we put up on YouTube, which is uh, it's so important we've sort of come together with Exopolitics UK and my sort of basis theme and the Amash project because um, uh, David Griffith gave a very important presentation about the Falklands War and the alien um, involvement with the Argentinians in an island of, of Antarctica called Thule Island. That's T-H-U-L-E. Mm. And uh, this is very important because the, a lot of the connections, if you look at the Amash material, um, basically uh, there's an, all, an awful lot of pointers towards the military involvement with uh, non-humans. And I, I would prefer to qualify these so-called aliens or ETs or whatever you want to call them, just call them non-humans. Yeah, because we don't have definite proof they're extraterrestrial, and we don't have definite proof they're extra-dimensional. We just don't know who they are. They're not us. Yeah, Miles, we started off calling them aliens when we first started, and we very quickly dropped that and went for non-humans because nobody really seems to have a, a definitive yeah, answer. Uh, the reason for that is that the the disinfo, the COINTELPRO disinfo, is always distracting people away from where the focus is. So when you call people aliens, a or extraterrestrials you're immediately assuming we've got a three-dimensional universe, which is wrong, and yeah. you're immediately assuming that they must be in a distant planet far, far away. And yeah. then, of course, the astronomers will immediately debunk everything and say, oh, well, it takes so many thousand million years for the speed of light to go here and there, and therefore you're talking bunk because they could, no way could a spaceship ever come here or we but, send them. But that's only up. because they're still working with the physics paradigm <coughs> and accepting that... Um, you know, the speed of light is it, and that's clearly not the case. And so this, uh, this, this connects immediately with the falsehood of Einsteinian physics, the way... Or being contacted by other beings or anomalous mind management mm. could turn to for support and understanding. Because it is primarily a, hi a helpline. Th there is a phone number and an email address, and they help people who've had abduction experiences and such like. And it's somewhere for you to turn to. Yeah, uh, we don't. Uh, it's a hard thing yeah. to talk about. I mean, about. They, they do interviews. He's got uh, there's a there's a YouTube channel, uh, Megawatts uh, One or Six, I think, um, and they've got the website and they've got information and they do sort of conferences and they talk about exopolitics and all that stuff. But they also do uh, an actual bona fide helpline. Yeah, they do. And, and a lot of the people who phone it, I assume, don't go on to you know great media careers and tell everybody about the story. They're, they're it's just private. Oh no, they don't want to. No. They don't want the publicity. Only um, a small few 99% of the time. We've had to literally drag people onto this show. Certainly, to some talk of them. about things yeah. like that. And they'll have all their details at the end of the, inter of the interview. Yeah. If you'd like to contact them. And uh, why don't we have a... An advert? Yeah. Okay. Why not? Are you ready for an adventure? Prepare yourself for more alternative future radio than any human being should have access to. How do you get this? It's simple. With the new alternative future radio Android application, you can download all the latest shows and the archived shows as well. Help support alternative future radio for just a dollar and 99 cents. PayPal will bill you in your very own currency if you don't use dollars. Find out more at alternativefutureradio.com. Okay, now we're going live over to somewhere in West London to talk to Miles Johnson and also Joanne Summerscales, I believe. Hello, uh, yeah. Miles and Joanne. 
Hello. Hello. I'm in West London, and Joanne is linking via Skype from up north in Nottingham, the English Midlands. Ah. The East Midlands, Nottinghamshire, actually. I'm not too far from from Eastwood, which is the birthplace of D.H. Lawrence. Oh, right. Well, that's how you like to sell it, is it? Oh, I. Uh, <laughs> yes. oh, the Porsche intelligent one. <laughs> well, how well, much? I just have the better hairdo, 